This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Welcome to worship, everyone, on this baptism of our Lord Sunday, a Sunday that we are reminded of Jesus' baptism, but it's also a Sunday that we think about our own baptism, the baptism of water and the Holy Spirit, the promises of God that comes to us in the water, the promises that we are cleansed, that we are claimed, and that we are called. Welcome to worship, everyone. A couple of announcements for our community this day. Starting on January 17th, we will be moving our worship time to 9.30, our outdoor worship time at 9.30. We will continue to provide our online services um, on uh, Saturdays, uh, so you continue to watch our worship service online or in our parking lot. Again, worship will be at 9.30. Also, um, starting January 17th, we will no longer have our Zoom coffee hour. We're going to be taking a break um, from our Zoom coffee hour as we move our worship worship time. Um, I want to thank our community for being uh, flexible and pivoting and nimble as we continue to kind of shuffle things around um, as we continue our journey through COVID-19 and during this, this time. A great part of our worship uh, this morning on this online worship service is that we will get to be a part of Micah Gaber's uh, baptism. Micah is the son of Andrew and Aaron. His grandparents are Linda and Frank. Um, and as a community of faith, we pray for Andrew and Aaron as they parent uh, Micah as they um, walk this journey with their son. It is a joy to have this baptism with you today. And as you watch and are a part of Micah's baptism, may you think of your own baptism and the tattoo that you all receive and the marking of the son of the cross of Christ that is on your forehead. My dear friends, Welcome to worship. It is time to worship. We join together in the call to worship. On that first day, you gave birth to creation. Your light danced through the darkness. The waters of hope flowed freely and clear. On that first day at the Jordan, you spoke of life, grace, and love for all your children. On this first day of the week, when we begin anew, you call us to faithfulness as we open our hearts to you and hear your voice claiming us as your own. Amen.
We join together in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Gracious God, you cast your light and call us your beloved. Forgive us when we still linger in the shadows, when we treat others in hurtful ways, when we speak ill of others. As Jesus knelt in the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him as your child. Forgive us when we put ourselves ahead of you when we think that you are no longer needed, when we fail to see you in the brokenness of our world. Baptized into your living waters, you call us your children. Forgive us when we fail to welcome the stranger, when we refuse to forgive as we should, and when we believe we are too good to kneel down and tie the shoes of the lost, the least, the last, and the little. Beloved children of God, washed by the waters of life, fed by the feast of grace and hope, embrace the warmth of God's love and forgiveness. Your sins are forgiven, blessed by God's water of life, filled with the peace of the Spirit. We are redeemed, restored, and refreshed. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Amen. Prayer of the Day 
Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is so good to gather on this baptism of our Lord weekend to gather with Aaron and Andrew and their son Micah for his baptism. So we gather as we begin our baptismal service. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By the water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises up to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Aaron and Andrew, who do you present for baptism this day? Say his full name. Micah Gotham Gaber. Awesome. Andrew and Aaron, as you bring Micah to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with Micah among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach Micah the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, and to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Micah grow in Christian faith and love. Andrew and Aaron, please say, I do. I do. Adrian and Emily, do you promise to nurture Micah in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Would you both say, I do? Thank you. I do. And as people of God, those that will be watching this and those that are going to be praying for Andrew and Aaron and Micah, <laughs> Do you promise to support Micah and pray for him in his new life in Christ? And we enthusiastically say, we do. we do. As we come to baptism, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We respond, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He descended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Micah, you want to bring him over the baptismal font, Andrew? Micah, you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can use this to wipe. There you go. And I'll pretend that I'm placing my hand on his forehead as we pray. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and son new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Micah with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, 
both now and forever. Amen. Micah, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. Amen. We light candles for all kinds of celebrations, for birthdays and anniversaries and all kinds, retirements. And today we light a candle as we give thanks for Micah's baptism today. And Andrew and Aaron, I invite you on January 2nd every year to light this candle and to remind Micah of God's great love for him. And also light that candle often to remind all of you of God's love for you, the promises that God has made for each of you and your family, and the promises that we as a community have made to pray for all of you as you together raise Micah and have God be the center of your family. We hear these words, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. We welcome Micah. We welcome Micah into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. God's blessings to each and every one of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to greet you on this baptism of our Lord weekend. I have a question for you. How many of you love water? Do you love to splash in the water? Do you like to play in the water? I love water. When I was growing up, we would spend many weekends up at my grandparents' cabin. And then when my parents bought our cabin, we would spend every waking moment in the water. It was delightful. You know, water is one of those things that God gives to us as a gift. It is a gift that nourishes us, nourishes our brothers and sisters, and nourishes all of God's creatures and creation. But there's also something really special 
about water on this baptism of our Lord Sunday, where we think about our own baptism. Many of you may have been brought to this very font here at church. You were brought to this, to this baptismal font by your parents, maybe by your grandparents. You were brought to this baptismal font, and you had water put over your head and the words saying that you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in those words, those words, this water, you were given a promise. The promise that God claims you and loves you and will always be with you. And then the pastor probably dipped his or her finger into the water or maybe even had some special oil and made a tattoo. Did you know that you have a tattoo? You have a tattoo on your forehead. The tattoo of the sign of the cross of Christ that's on your forehead. And that's a visible reminder of God's love and claiming for you that you are God's child and God will always be with you. I love to talk about baptism and I love getting you wet and sprinkling you with God's love because even though we use a little bit of water, in baptism, I think God sprinkles you every single day with splashes of water, splashes of God's love and grace and claiming every single day. So here's what I want you to do. The next time that you go to the sink to wash your hands or maybe to brush your teeth, put your finger underneath that water. Dip it in that water. Make the sign of the cross of Christ on your forehead to remind you of God's sprinkling, of God's love, and God's claiming. And remind yourself that you are a child of God. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, who I love. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the Grace and peace to you from our living and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, 
on this baptism of our Lord Sunday, this weekend where we remember our baptism, a baptism in the water where you promise us that you name us and you claim us, that you cleanse us, you claim us, and you call us. Now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, I had a very different idea of what my sermon was going to look like this weekend, this week. I have been thinking about baptism. I've been thinking about the baptism of our Lord, as that is our text, our gospel from the gospel of Mark this week. But as we live in this world, we live in a time and a place where the news sometimes just kind of unfolds before our eyes. And as I watch the news of this week unfold before my eyes, words were hard to come by. Emotions, for me, were at the surface. And the desire, the yearning, the longing to gather with each and every one of you in our sanctuary for worship, for conversation, for prayer, and to come together as a community at the table, at our Lord's table, to receive the bread and the wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, have weighed heavily on my heart and mind this week. As I stand in this place, I stand before you humbly, and I stand before you as one voice of many in this community and our congregation. My voice is still trying to process, still trying to understand the protesting, the chaos, and the violence that we have seen. Still trying to process the motivation and the distrust, the fear and anxiety that has gripped our country, each and every one of us, the hate and the division that we see in our public discourse, and that division and hate, and how it has found its way into each and every one of our relationships with family members, friends, neighbors, and how it has found its way and how we treat the stranger, but maybe more importantly, how we treat each other. This voice is full of emotion, the emotion of sadness, of anger, a strong desire of peace and a real strong desire for us to come back to the table so that we can talk to each other, so that we can listen to each other and we can learn from each other and learn from each other's stories. This voice is also quiet. I'm not really sure where to find its place, its space. This voice is a voice that knows that the wounds are deep, the pain is deep, the emotions are deep, and they are real. And the pain and the emotions that we all feel are so very powerful. And they have a grip on us. They have a grip on us as individuals and as a nation. This voice is also full of questions. How do we start anew? How do we build bridges instead of walls? How do we come back to the table to have conversations with family and friends and neighbors? How do we have conversations with those that we might disagree with and still love them instead of, being, instead of having an attitude of I'm right and they're wrong? Knowing that attitude when you start a conversation, it doesn't get us anywhere. 
We basically begin a conversation and we've closed ourselves off to listening to that other voice and listening to their story. And my friends, in doing so, we miss out. How do we have a conversation around difficult issues and topics that are so important and those conversations are so needed? How do we show compassion and love during those conversations and around those conversations? How do we talk about the experience that each and every one of us has had this past year with the pandemic, the protests, the violence of this past summer? How do we talk about white privilege and racism? And more importantly, how do we take action around racism and white privilege? And how do we reflect in our own lives about racism and white privilege? How do we talk about the protest and the violence that we saw this week? How do we talk and listen to each other about all the emotions and the questions that each and every one of us has. And how do we do that in community, in the body of Christ? How do we navigate these waters individually, as a community, as a country? How do we do this? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God moved over the waters. God's breath moved over the waters. And God's breath created night and day. God's breath of life breathed life into being. God's breath is life. God's breath continues to breathe life. And maybe that's where we start. We start with that promise that God continues to breathe life into God's people and into God's creation. And God never stops breathing life and love and hope. God never stops breathing life into our emotions, our questions, our conversations, and our relationships. And as God breathes life, we're reminded that God's breath of life. God's breath is on the loose. It is on the loose in each of your lives, in our relationships, in our community, and in the world. And it is a breath of life that changes everything. God's breath changes everything, just as we read and heard from Genesis this day. God's breath brought life out of chaos. What a great place to start in the promise that God's breath of life, of love, and a hope is on the loose. God's breath of life is in all people, and all creatures, and in all creation. And to that, my friends, we say, thanks be to God. As we rest, And as we live in that promise, we read from the Gospel of Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God's breath of life and love was up to something, is up to something in Jesus Christ, God's Son, who comes to live and dwell among us and take on our flesh, take on our joys, our sadness, our praise, our hardship, and yes, even our sins. A new beginning has come, and that new beginning changes everything. In this new beginning, it starts at the water. Water, that gift of life for each and every one of us all of God's creatures and all of God's creation. Water is needed to nourish us, to nourish our bodies and our souls. Water is, nourished to, is needed to nourish all of God's creation. Jesus 
comes from Nazareth, comes to the river Jordan, and is baptized. And as Jesus comes out of the water, the heavens are torn apart. The heavens are torn apart. They are torn open. Just like when we tear open our favorite bag of chips or that box of cereal, that seal on those chips or on that box of cereal is changed. It is permanently changed. The heavens were opened up, and God shows again that God is on the loose. In the event of Jesus' baptism, God is on the loose. And we begin to see that God will not stay distant from us. Instead, what does God do? God tears open the heavens to come and to be with us. It is in those waters, the waters of baptism, as one of my colleagues said this week, where we are cleansed, we are claimed, and we are called. In those waters, we are cleansed. We are cleansed from our sins, and we are made new, and we are made whole. We are cleansed daily by this water and washed again and again and again from our sins. Just as we wash our hands and our face, the waters of baptism wash over us and cleanse us with grace, with God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness every day. That cleansing also calls for self-examination and reflection for each and every one of us. In those waters, we are claimed. As Jesus came out of the waters, the voice of heaven came and said, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. That is what God said to Jesus, and that is what God says to each and every one of us. You are my son. You are my daughter. With you, I am well pleased. We are called. As the waters of baptism are washed over us, we are called to live as disciples and as children of God. We are called to live what? As we live what? That means we are called to love, to do justice, to, to live in peace, to a life of compassion, and to walk alongside and with and with our brothers and sisters. It is in those waters that we are yoked. We are yoked to God and Christ and the Holy Spirit who lives and breathes life and love and hope into each one of us. In those waters, as we are called, we are yoked to each other. We are yoked to community. We are yoked to the common good. We are called. And in that calling, we mess up. And in the waters of baptism that washes over us again and again and again, we are made whole and new. And we live out this calling again and again and again daily, in that cleansing, that claiming, and calling, we ask the question, how do we navigate these waters? Those questions that I asked at the beginning, how do we navigate those waters individually, as a community, as a country? How do we do this? We start at the beginning, knowing and trusting and the promise that God is on the loose. And that changes everything. We start with the strong knowledge that God is for us and not against us. We start with the strong knowledge and with the hope that God is at work, even today. We start knowing that however dark or how shadowy this world becomes, God's light is never extinguished. 
It is always, it is always a beacon to those who wait to watch, pray, and act. We start and we stand against all, all things that oppose love and justice. We start with the bold proclamation of who God is. God is love. We start with the bold proclamation of who God is in the midst of terror and fear. We start with the bold proclamation of confession and forgiveness and reconciliation to God, to ourselves, and to one another. We start by clinging to and knowing that God is love, and God's love yokes us and binds us together. We start by living wet in the waters and promises of baptism that cleanses us, that claims us, that calls us. And in that cleansing, and in that claiming, and in that calling, we have eyes, and we have hearts, and we have hands and feet that see each other as God sees us, as children of God. We start. We start by dipping our hands in the water and placing the sign of the cross of Christ on our forehead to remind us, to remind us of that cleansing, to remind us of that claiming, and to remind us of being called. And that, my friends, maybe is where we start, where we start on this day. Amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining In the midst of the darkness shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us Set us free by the truth you now bring us Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father's glory Set our hearts on fire Flow with the flow Flood the nations with grace and mercy Send forth your word, Lord, and let them Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father's glory
guided by Christ, may known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of new beginnings, through water and word, you shine light into the shadows of our lives. Through the water and word, you call us children of God and claim us today, tomorrow, and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For wilderness and water and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, may God shower each with kindness and compassion. We lift those that we name on our heart and in the prayer chain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid the strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. For the leaders of nations, as they make decisions about the vaccine rollout, newly elected Congress, and the peaceful transition of power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of all who divide among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, go into the world as God's beloved children. We will go to share the gift of grace which flows from God's heart. Go into the world as baptized sisters and brothers of Christ. We go to bring the light of hope to all in despair. Go into the world as those filled with the Holy Spirit. We go to hear the whisper of yearnings for peace and reconciliation. Amen.